artist, album title. Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd. It's time for an album review with my, my special guest, Crickets. Thanks for watching. This is the latest LP from saxophonist and composer Matana Roberts. And yes, you guys convinced me to man up and review a jazz record. Anyway, she's put out full lengths before this album. She even has a live album that came out this year too. But this is my first introduction to her work, so it's not like I'm an expert on her earlier stuff. But still, this album was a really good introduction to her, and I think it could be for you too if you're willing to kind of suck it up and just try something different. Because this thing is not your, your average jazz record. It experiments more than it sticks to traditions. If you're a fan of avant-garde music and you've enjoyed jazz greats like Pharaoh Sanders, Sun Ra, Alice Coltrane, Ornette Coleman, you will definitely feel at home with this album. Coin Coin Chapter One, Free People of Color, is an album of music, of songs, but I really think it's best to kind of approach this thing as being a story, a narrative, kind of a movie. And this thing is Chapter One in what's supposed to be a 12-chapter series, six chapters of this series, Matana says, have been worked on, improvised, written. And I'm just thinking, when will these 11 other pieces be heard? This one album is an hour. Will they be heard live? Will they ever see a print on record? Will they have the same narrative as this album? Are they going to be in a similar style, have a similar sound? same musicians. The more I tried to read into that and Matana's personal approach to musical notation using stuff like visuals, I, I just got really confused. I don't really want to know how the sausage is made. I would rather just the sausage be cooked and then put on my plate and I enjoy it for, for what it is, or what I interpret it to be. Between the eight tracks on this album, Matana goes through a lot of different jazz styles, from light, loungy jazz to Dixieland to modal grooves and drones as well as free jazz passages that get pretty noisy and dissonant. There's even one track that just really openly embraces the sound of spirituals which really sit at the roots of jazz music. And this story that this album tells that I keep alluding to is one about the ancestral history of Africans in America going all the way back to the days of slavery. Now, being a white guy, born in 1985, with European descendants from France and Sicily who traveled over here to North America a couple generations ago for a better life, I cannot relate at all to what it must be like to be a slave in the 1700s. But what I love about this album and Matana's work on it is she takes her emotions for this ancestral history and translates them into music in such a way where it impacts me and makes me feel like I relate in a way, or, or not really relate, but just feel deep and painful emotions for what she's saying and what she's trying to convey on this album. With celebration and fear and confusion and suffering, this thing really covers the emotional spectrum and it all comes out ringing loud and clear. But musically, it's very noisy, harsh, taxing, and experimental at a lot of points. It can be really difficult to translate and wade through. The music on this thing really kind of brings me down to depressing lows and, and kind of soaring highs, one right after another. Uh, the introduction to this album, Rise, is really sporadic, really kind of awkwardly disjointed. Not one of my favorite tracks on the album because things feel so disconnected on that particular track, but it serves a purpose with a really tense and kind of ugly soundscape of horns, strings, piano, upright bass, drum rolls in every direction. It just really kind of creates this pull that snaps on the second track when 
the music basically explodes. And I mean explodes in a way that I've never really heard an album explode before. Not only is all the instrumentation just boiling over like lava out of a volcano, but Matana is screaming. Blood curdling screaming. She is just screaming murder. And not like screaming in a really obnoxious or annoying way for me. That's it, it never came off that way. Though sometimes screaming on an album can make me feel like that. It was more like a, a, a painful scream. A scream of of suffering. Of heartbreak. And it literally breaks my heart to hear it over and over. As much as I am kind of drawn to the uniqueness that I feel in that track and this album, it's still not very easy to listen to. The song falls into a groove and Matana, through some spoken word, just presents this character that she's drawn up to play out this narrative that she wants to weave together. She's 16. She's a slave. She's being bought and sold. Her parents died of yellow fever. It's a song that plays every single time Matana needs to kind of come forward and push this narrative again and tell you more about this person who she's talking about. The second time you hear about her, she's 25 and her master seems to be kind of forcing himself upon her and having kids with her. At first I didn't really like her spoken word, I didn't like how jumpy and, and jittery it was, but as I kind of returned to the album and, and listened to it more I just came to appreciate what she was saying and how tense she needs that moment to kind of be when she's describing this character and telling the story. On the fifth track, the lyrics lay heavily into a spiritual, but the lyrics dis but the lyrics disturbingly paint a picture of people being lined up to be bought and sold and just auctioned off. There's only so much I can really say about that track. I feel like some people will be too cynical to take it seriously, but I found it too disturbing to really kind of put into words. And by the last track, this character that Matana is playing, is speaking for, has been released by her master and has had kids with this guy for almost, and has kids with this guy for like 19 years. And she now has land, is working it, is making money, and is doing her best to buy back her kids and other people as well. It's a pretty powerful story just enhanced by all of this tense and, and beautiful jazz music. And it does have its upsides. It does have its really difficult moments. I mean, I found a lot of this album to just kind of make me sick to my stomach, literally. Literally sick, like, and, and kind of disgusted. And not in a, in a white guilt kind of way, like, I feel directly responsible and guilty for slavery because I'm a white guy. I'm just more shocked at the sheer inhumanity of this whole situation. This album stares boldly into the face of inhumanity for a very, very long time. Longer than most people would be willing to bear. Musically, I, I guess the only issues that I have with this album is the first track feels pretty disjointed and, and maybe it's not the, the strongest introduction to this album for me. I felt like it could have been a little bit more to the point. And the last track, though I, I enjoy the sentiment behind it, it feels a little kind of anticlimactic or, or uneventful for me. It does kind of end on a lighter note, but it's not like maybe the, the climax or the explosion that I was hoping for. But maybe that's what will make this album kind of a, a perfect lead-in into chapter two, which I hope gets released. This is a very strong album. It's a very bold, bold album. And uh, definitely unlike a lot of the music you're going to hear this year. So at least go into this expecting that. There's a link below this video somewhere on the needledrop.com too where you can stream the entire thing in full. Let me know what you think. I'm feeling a, a light to decent eight on this. Anthony Fantano, Matana Roberts, Coin Coin, Chapter One, Free People of Color, Forever.